What is up, everybody? We are here to talk some Yoshinobu Yamamoto and just try and figure out like what his comps are, what he'll look like in the MLB this year. And I brought along my trusty sidekick or hero. We haven't decided yet. Michael Fisher from Coder Fi. What is up, Mike? What's up? I, I think I might have said Coder Fi, but I like it. I'm gonna go with it. Cool. And remember, guys, hit subscribe because we want you to see all our discussions we're gonna be having throughout the year, next year forever and ever amen so hit subscribe anyway we've delved into yamamoto and if you don't know like he is ridiculous um three consecutive sawamura awards three mvps tying ichiro like the i mean as a starting pitcher tying ichiro for mvps pretty darn impressive and three pitching triple crowns in in uh, the mpb as well so coming over here prime of his career 25 years old and we're gonna break down his pitches and see what to expect so what do you got fisher let's start with his fastball i'll tell you what let me start with one thing just throw you a curve if you will and that is just the, this whole thing of this discounting of his japanese league stats like well it's a, it's in the japanese league okay i don't care we do care but for the moment i don't care if he throws underhand Dude put up a 121 ERA last year. He gave up two home runs. This is the Japanese league. We've seen other guys come over. It, it's wrong to discount that. Uh, no, he's not going to do that over here. But we've already talked about this. High twos, low threes is completely reasonable. Um, it's really the human element and how he gets settled in and all that stuff. It's not his pitches. It's not some weak, crappy league that uh, we, we should just like not not put value on that. That's wrong. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And the good thing is we have metrics from him, from the WBC, so we can mm -hmm. do a little bit of extrapolating from that. But I 100% agree with you. Like, I mean, you know, I I had interviewed Senga before the season started. I had my own questions on on how Senga was going to do and how he was going to make his <clears> jump because, you know, injuries, little inconsistency, but also some, I mean, we all, I knew his ghost fork for years. I started following him in like, 20 i don't remember what it was 2015 2016 something like that long time ago um mostly because i thought his mechanics were interesting for a dude who throws hard not that big and he came over and took him a tiny bit to adjust like get a little bit more command and know how to mix his pitches in correctly and once he did that it was uh i mean he was as good as anybody other than like blake snell like he was literally as good as anybody so Mm -hmm. Where does Yamamoto compare with Senga? Well, I think you can make a pretty strong argument. His Japanese stats are significantly Absolutely. better. Yeah, like Absolutely. It, Not close, uh, actually. Yeah, and I think Senga would say the same thing. I think Senga would yeah. say, this dude is ridiculous. So would Otani. Um, they would all mm -hmm. sing his praises. Um, so I totally wholeheartedly agree with you on that. Right. Yeah, um, to your point, uh, looked at the one good game we had of WBC StatCast stuff and looked at his release point and looked at, uh, you know, obviously the, the Bologna movement and got more of an appreciation of, of what his deal is. You want, you want to talk about a fastball comp. I mean, you're, you're talking about like Kevin Gosman. Yeah. And, and this is, it's really important to note, this is Yamamoto in March. Like, you know. He was sitting whatever it was, 95, 96 in that game. Like, come on, we, we know he has a higher gear. You know you're going to see something more than that later in the year and all that if he's healthy. So, I mean, even just looking at that one game and looking for comps, I mean, if your you're comp in March is a, is a you know, mid-season Kevin Gosman fastball, that's pretty good. You know, you make a great point because I was looking at those stats as well, and I didn't put the March qualifier on them. Um, and you're 100% right. Like, he was not – you know, all warmed up, ready to go. This was not prime no. Yamamoto, even though his stats were fantastic for the WBC and his limited outings. I mean, he had good, right. K, you know, nice K numbers and everything. But yeah, I mean, he, another notch or two, especially coming over, like saying it didn't lose really anything coming over. I wouldn't be surprised to see Yamamoto maybe even pick up a, a notch or two coming over. I'm um, at a Kevin Gosman comp on a fastball. That's pretty solid. Good praise. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, the other real, real good twist that I haven't seen talked about a lot is, you know, there's a focus on his velocity and his movement. It's, it's an impressive fastball, you know, but he's 5'10". And what does that mean? For a long time, we're like, oh, you know, short pitcher. What a disadvantage. Like, you know, if you can throw like that from the, that slot, from that altitude, changes the whole shape of the baseball. 
And suddenly, yeah, my foot, my fastball isn't a Felix Bautista, you know, riser or whatever, but it's coming from down here and it still seems to, when it gets to the plate, it still has that angle that is so beneficial to the pitcher and so brutal on the hitter. Yeah, and another interesting point is there are adjustments that pitchers make coming over from Japan mm -hmm. to the U.S. that actually helps them compete. I've heard from Japanese fans, it was a matter like Senga was trying to spot his ghost fork. And uh, once he realized he could just throw it down the middle and hitters are going to miss it, that made a huge difference. Same thing with uh, Fuji, with giving him a little bit more confidence, setting up down the middle instead of trying to hit spots. It's a different philosophy in the U.S., which may allow him to throw his fastball harder um, and just unleash a little bit more divert. I mean, it's change up his pitch mix potentially. There are a lot of things that a a, a club that is well armed or somebody that's armed with your maps, to be honest, like if if you know they contracted out and said, "Hey, what do you got? Who should I imitate? Um, where should I attack these hitters?" Yeah, pairing him up with a Senga in New York or something like that is interesting because Senga already has those scouting reports. But mm -hmm. giving that little more in depth, Yamamoto shows every signs of being one of those pitching scientists that's able to hit his spots and use things like heat maps to his advantage. I might, I, I, I hate to say he can be better than he was in Japan because nobody in the history of baseball really can rightfully say they're better than that. But it's not impossible that he could be somewhere in that neighborhood. I think he will be better. But I don't think we've seen his peak. You won't see the numbers. He's right. not going to, you know, it's hard to think. Yeah, no, it can't. And just can't. Yeah, numbers not, over here. Yeah, not he's not going to but, yeah. have a career 170 ERA would be a little bit much to ask. Right. Um, but there are, see, like, to expect a lot out of him, even, you know, being one of the top pitchers in the league is 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 certainly – you know, not an impossible reach for him or, you know, Cy Young contention, all that. Well, Senga was in Cy Young contention this year, and I I thought he deserved even more attention than he got. Right. You look at some of the other guys you've mentioned that came over and what their walk rates were over there and how yes. they had to deal with that. And you look at Yamamoto and you're like, he's not walking, guys. He's he's putting it where he wants. And he knows how to get out. And he's not going for punch outs and wild swings and chases so much. Uh, and you can see why when you look at the – when you look at his arsenal, we'll continue to do that. You know, he could he could be pretty good with two of these three or four pitches that he throws, and he's you know he's probably going to end up with five over here. Right, and in the NPB, his fastball was ranked I think fourth out of all the fastballs in the league, ahead mm -hmm. of Bowers, who was a Cy Young Award winner in the major leagues, mm -hmm. um, behind Roki Sasaki, who is going to be the most ridiculous pitcher on right. earth eventually. Um, certainly if he comes over here and I don't want to discount what he does there too, because he may be the most ridiculous pitcher on earth currently. Um, but you're talking about a high quality fastball that's respected by his peers. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would not, I'd certainly, I've, I've looked at tunneling on his fastball. I think it sets up his other pitches really, really well and being open-minded and seeing some pitch design stuff that we have here in pitch combos and, you know, being able to pitch off his fastball is going to be, you know, big for him here. I, I see a, you know, upside with that. Yeah, I mean, it, even even that March WBC fastball, which is not his his mainstream one, looks fine on on the maps. And <clears throat> to to for a hitter to sit there and worry about that and like this guy can put it where he wants to. It's a tough pitch to hit on its own. And then, oh crap, I have to worry about his curveball and his splitter. And you know, this cutter is not something he's really used that much. But when you start looking at comps and the fact that he can, he can throw it where he wants, like, look out, that's a good pitch on its own. Oh yeah. I, I DM you about that going like, I see yeah. upside in his arsenal with his cutter because he hasn't used it. But the comps I see with it too are, you know, if he can command it, like it looks like he can, he can use it differently than he used over there and copy the way some other pitchers use it to marry it with the rest of his arsenal to make him, even that much better. The other thing I like about him going is still sticking on the fastball. He's got very simple mechanics. Um, so I can see that walk rate kind of sticking where, you know, it's hard to say. Like it's a very low walk rate. Um, can he get it down even further? Can he approach one with it? Potentially, yeah. There's no reason he can't. Um, you know, I I, I just don't know. Like I I don't want to put that on him. Ball size a little different. Senga did mentioned that that it took him a little bit but we've come better about 
right. having Japanese pitchers come over and knowing what they need to do to adjust. Like I think, you know, even even going far back to Tanaka and Darvish, they didn't know, you know, you got them over here. Now we have plan we have much better stats on folks. We have much better comps. We have much better ability to teach some of this mm -hmm. stuff or know how the struggles that other struggles that other folks went through um, to shorten that learning curve. So uh, I expect him to hit the ground running. And both, you know, even looking back to Tanaka coming over, he hit the ground running when he came over as well and was coming off. But yeah, it was like 24 and 0 or something like that the season he came over. And um, but still there are signs that he was hit more hittable than than Yamamoto was over there. Yamamoto's hits per nine are low. Yeah, and he knows where he can get the contact. It's it's the stuff that you say about guys pitch to contact in this, and a lot of times we talk about this, it's baloney. Right. That, that doesn't work. You're not that good to, to hit little spots on the bat because it, Yamamoto kind of is. I mean, he, he, you know, he's not striking 15 guys out per nine. He's, he's getting guys to hit the ball and make outs, and it's going to translate over there. Yeah, and one thing you'll notice too is a lot of the strikeouts per nine, the K per nine, is a little lower over there among some guys. Like even different going back swings. to Otani, right? Different swings, more putting the ball in play. Um, yeah. So he may have more swing and miss than he's seen over there coming over here. His curveball to me, it was voted the number two curveball in the MPB, and I believe the number two pitch overall, number two secondary pitch overall behind Bauer's curve and Bauer's curve was no slouch. If you look back through it his time right. in MLB, like it was a very, very good they, curveball. They could have flipped that and I would have been okay with it. Yeah, exactly. And that's, so that's saying a huge bit. He releases it like a yo-yo. So this is why I love it is I called his yo-yo curveball because his name, you have yo-yo, you have Yamamoto, you have Yoshinobu. Um, so you, you got it, but he releases it very unique. It's a, it's a grip that is only taught in certain areas, um, in Japan. I think it was a oh. Ginoza curveball, and, uh, it's just a weird way to release it and it works and gets a great spin rate and a huge amount of drop. Um, so let's go into that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's Kershaw drop. It's like, a, an inch less drop than Kershaw's and it's going four miles an hour faster and it's got horizontal. I mean, Kershaw's is straight down and he's. He was in this one game we we're looking at that, where they have the stats. He had 14 inches of average horizontal with that drop and that velo. It's not some Wainwright, and I'm not ripping on Wainwright, but you know, slow curve where you kind of might have time to react and all this stuff. 77 miles an hour with that movement is insane. Yeah. And I think even like Bauer was around 10 when he was in, in MLB. Yeah. I think that's right. 10 horizontal, um, kind of similar from what I remember. I'm just off the top of my head. Um, vertical but mm -hmm. you're talking even more horizontal with a ton of vertical you know yeah. excellent spin rate of what it was something like 2800 or so yeah. um it's a it's a really really good pitch to pitch off his curve his fastball um you go elevated with it yeah. and uh and you're comparing it. So we're, we're doing a comp and you're looking at, well, you know, Wayno's curveball doesn't quite stack up to it. Kershaw's is slower. doesn't have as much. You're talking about some of the greatest curveballs in the history of baseball. And that's what we're discussing with this dude. It, I mean, closest might be Darvish. Um, but if you look at Darvish's uh, season averages, it's one mile an hour slower. Uh, Darvish had like four inches less drop because of course he does, because it's very hard to do that. And like three inches less uh, uh, horizontal. I mean, a Darvish, a Darvish curve with th that extra drop and horizontal and, and faster. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So we're and, that's cr Yeah, it is crazy. Cause you're I talking mean, Gosman fastball with a Darvish plus curve. Right. Right. So um, there. Yeah, it's 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 it, this is it, how he put the numbers up, and then oh yeah, the splitter, and oh yeah, the show me Corbin Burns cutter almost. I, I said that we'll is say. the cut. I didn't want to sneak ahead, but you're 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 nailing it with that was my comp, and I don't want to do that to anybody no. saying that's a Corbin Burns cutter, but, but if it's really he can, close. it's really close. Uh, so and let's go. In March. <laughs> yeah, I know. So all right, so 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 let's go touch on that on the splitter because okay. we we haven't. You know, we're looking at a curveball that is is going to be elite in you know at the MLB level, and that isn't his best out pitch. His best out pitch has been his splitter, which what do you comp this to? Otani, like, or I mean, 
Well, this is a weird one because I mean, you can say Otani is close, and I know, uh, I know there's an article. Is it David Adler said it's really close? It's like, but actually, I mean, Yamamoto was still in a splitter like 90 miles an hour. Right. Uh, Otani doesn't do that. Um, still getting, you know, what two inches less break drop uh, than Otani's at that velocity. It's crazy. That's crazy. And le- a little less of that horizontal that Otani has. I mean, Otani got to where he was, he was getting quite a bit. Yeah. And, and this was rated the number one splitter in the NPB, in addition to having the number two curveball in the NPB and a number four fastball. Um, and you're talking about a league. This isn't like having the number two splitter, even in the major leagues, you're talking about a league that thrives on splitters and this is the best splitter. So uh, in Japan, the splitter is the national pitch, basically. Here, they here have, uh, yeah, they right. Have so I, I, should correct, I should correct what I said. It's a little closer than I thought. Um, but take, an, take Otani's average splitter last year, which I hope we don't have to say more than that, of what how good that was. And in March, in this one game, Yamamoto's average was over a mile an hour faster. It dropped two more inches, and it had two more inches of horizontal. <laughs> then an Otani splitter, which, oh yeah, by the way, we talk about his fastball and his curveball, and we'll talk about his cutter. And like, this guy is just going to the toolkit, and it's like, wait, and he can throw it where he, all this stuff where he wants. Gee, you yeah. might get a 121 ERA in Japan doing that. Yeah, I mean, it, it is mind-boggling because Otani's splitter, he didn't throw it as much last year because he got, no. you know, the blister issue, but it... Right it has been his best pitch for forever and it is an ungodly unfair pitch to throw. Um, and if you look at the stats against Otani splitter, it is forever filthy. And this is just, you know, we're here debating, well, his curveball is really, you know, his curveball is great, but he also has a splitter. That's also an Otani type splitter with a fastball as a Gosman type fastball. You are starting to see the picture of why this guy is so sought after and so good and kind of what to expect from him and then we go to this cutter which i started looking at the stats too and i see just visually what it looks like to me i think he's underusing it i think he can use it at a high level um you know next season if he can learn to backdoor it like corbin burns did it opens up a whole lot of other things for him where you can throw that splitter off it maybe but uh and it keeps people off that fastball because everyone wants even though it's a good fastball He's still going to want to keep MLB hitters off it. Let's talk about that cutter. It's so, I mean, it is a lot closer to Burns than I I had thought. Um, Again, one mile an hour slower, fine. It's March. I'll give him that back. Uh, It's got within an inch of the drop, and it's got within an inch of the horizontal of a a Corbin Burns cutter. And so what are you, you're up there with the stick going, how the hell do I hit this guy? What do I do to prepare to hit his fastball? What, where am I looking? Because I know where he wants to use it. Where am I looking? Where am I looking for the curveball? Where am I looking for the splitter? Well, now where am I looking for a cutter that's kind of in between all this stuff? You can, And go ahead and guess because, like, congratulations, you guessed right. You're still screwed because it's still a really good pitch, and he's putting it where he wants. Like, this is what people are going to have to deal with. Yeah, and I think that's the big point is – Usually with a guy with this nasty of stuff, you're going to sit there and go, well, I'm going to, yeah, I'll take anything that's, that's close. may end up off the plate. He's he's going to be a little wild. He's going to, it's the guy who throws the ball where he wants to. He's not at the Jacob deGrom level of walks, but he's not, or George Kirby level of command, but he is not far away from that. He's within spitting distance of that with this. Yeah. With this ungodly stuff. And I, th- I don't know what percentage he threw his cutter over there. I know it wasn't high, and this was considered his, you know, kind of tertiary offering or whatever the oh, word yeah. would be for further back than that even. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, and and does he have an opportunity to use this a little bit more? I mean. Oh, absolutely. The break on it, to my eyes, is a lot like yeah. that Burns subtle cutter that you can now start it off the plate, ends up just catching the zone and protect mm-hmm. and looks like a fastball coming in just misses bats yeah he's got actually pretty good blue to lefties up as well as the back door for sure and righties away it looks really good as well 
And again, what are you going to do? I mean, where I don't even know where you would look. I, I think about that with all these pitchers, and like we talked about guys, and like surviving on two pitches, but how good are they? And where do you, where are you looking for both? And you think, well, these are ending up at totally different places, but he can use one tunnel. Where is he tunneling these to get to get where you go? It's not always, you know, a bad thing that a pitcher uses different tunnels for different pitches because you have to look at the tunnel. So it just depends. And this 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 mix is it, it is ungodly. It, so really good point you made right there because different pitches with different tunnels. This I can see both the fastball. I, I've seen him tunnel his a low fastball with that splitter, yes. and then. The curveball with the elevated fastball is a natural. He also probably can get really crappy swings if he tunnels a low a, a curveball that bounces with that uh, fastball. Yeah. But you can't. That's the beauty of having those two pitches in your arsenal is it protects both the high fastball and low fastball. And the fastball protects those two pitches, and then the cutter protects the fastball of people giving up off a fastball off the plate comes back catches the plate. Um, so the names we're throwing around with this guy. Is a it, Gosman fastball, oh yeah, you know, a U Darvish plus curveball, um, Otani splitter, Otani splitter, and a Corbin Burns like cutter, with a guy that but, knows what he's doing and a team that will hopefully, hopefully, he gets on a team that takes advantage of all this. I can't imagine, I'd be nervous to screw it up. Right, it would be easy if the, if that was a headline. You wrote some article for Fox or whoever, and you're like this is the headline or this is the sub headline. It's like, this is hyperbole. It's just trying to get people to like, I'm just, I'm just exaggerating because it's fun to do that in the summer. This is, these are real comps. This is, these are objectively good comps and it's not, it's not fair. I mean, it's a Frankenstein, whatever picture, like let's just make it up. Like, who do you want? You know, maybe, maybe not the very best, but close to the best of four different pitches. It's crazy. Yeah, but it's I, real. I, but it's real. It's not. This isn't made up. Like, oh, this is called an Otani splitter. Like, oh, it's really close. You could argue yeah, better. Well, and the other beauty of it. Is, so remember, I had I had compared Yamamoto to the Pedro Martinez of the NPB, and backing mm -hmm. that up, Pedro at his height of his powers had like the best fastball, the best changeup, and the best curveball in the major leagues. And you're talking about a guy here who, in the NPB, has been voted the fourth best fastball, the best splitter. And the second best curveball there to a U.S. pitcher that has won the Cy Young Award, who has a phenomenal curveball. Right. Um, it's and then you okay. throw in a cutter, yeah, right. yeah, and then you throw in a cutter that he doesn't even use because he doesn't have to over there. That he, I bet you he uses more next year. Right, um, and we also saw a couple of intentional sweepers. That's what uh, I was going to say. That's what which, I was going to ask. Yep. I mean, there's a whole other thing. Like, what? What do you do? So, so I'm intrigued by the, like who's going to get them and what are they going to tell them? You know, I mean, we like with Senga, like you want someone will go to him in March and go, dude, or whatever the word is in Japanese. <laughs> uh, trust your stuff. You like uh, Senga splitter, throw it from like mid thigh down. There, no one's going to do anything. I mean, I know working with Gosman, I don't want to say too much, but like there was definitely that conversation of like, you have an enormous area, just trust it and throw it. You already know that it's good, but like, you know, like trust it. And it just makes all your pitches better. If he, I'm not su suggesting he has a ton of doubt over there, but you know, you're coming over to face the best hitters in the world and all that. Let's, let's hope that he has that positivity and trust in his stuff. Cause if so, then he'll skip that whole part of the learning curve and go straight to domination. Yeah. And again, selfishly, I'd love him on a team with another Japanese star who can help him, you know, ease it's always tough coming over. Like you, you imagine right. playing in a whole different culture. It's tough for us guys to go over there. Same coming back. Um, if he has somebody alongside him to help him with the scouting, to help him with little adjustments or adjustments, what to eat, how to grip a ball. That's a little, you know, a little bigger, a little slicker, um, little thing, little tricks that they've come up upon. Um, you know, like him alongside Senga would be a beauty, you know, be fantastic. But I know a lot of teams have learned a lot about uh you know could the dodgers do a lot with him could the yankees do a lot with him um i mean i don't know of any team that really couldn't but i'd love to see him maximize his talent <laughs> right right it'll be interesting what kind of schedule they put him on too right you know yeah you know, i agree catch every six or and work around him, or it'll be it'll be interesting to see yeah no, I, I i agree and that you know i guess it's that's all to be seen but 
you've seen how well that it worked out for Sango with a legit 60% whiff rate. It's not like his ghost fork fell off when he came to the, to the U S he had a 60% whiff rate on that pitch for the season with like a 110 batting average against, um, so there is literally no reason to, you know, always be skeptical. Like, is he going to come off and be a combo of Gosman, you know, Darvish, Otani, and Burns? If he does, then everybody's going to under, underpay for him, even whatever you're going to do. But it's a lot to put on somebody. But we're saying, like, this is a possibility looking at ceilings or looking at comps. This is what we got. These are comps. These aren't, like, here's here's the fastest Yamamoto because he's touched 99 on his fastball. Yeah, like he can right. throw 99. Right. This is just where he sat in a March game and looking at comparing to major leaguers over the whole year when they're, you know, all warmed up and ready to go. So, you know, if we had had – I don't. I haven't seen his, his you know, comparable uh, measures for last year because they lock it up, you know, don't let anybody see it. But we might be saying something even crazier. I, I think we would. Yeah, if we're comparing yeah. his his Japanese twenty twenty three seasonal averages to big leaguers from last year. Probably even more ridiculous. Yeah, I I totally agree. And again, no, this isn't a guy that you're going to have to com- like lasso in to make sure that he reins in some of that command, takes something off just to be in the zone. Mm-hmm. It's a very simple mechanics guy, a guy who lives in the zone, does not walk people, challenges folks. Um, has swing and miss in his game uh, and as a competitor too. Like you cannot win basically three consecutive Cy Young awards without that. And again, the Pedro-ish, I'd love to see that attitude. Like Pedro, Pedro, we, we've had that discussion is the all-time, you know, best if you look at one season without a doubt or two seasons without Those a doubt. Two, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, that's what Yamamoto is over there. So you're bringing that again, not saying Pedro is a thing. Nobody's Pedro other than Pedro, but right. that's what we got. Yeah. Again, it's more the the human element of moving, you know, half a world over and just seeing if how he can, everybody's different. I don't know that much about him to, to say confidently that I know he can handle it, but you know, again, totally agree with you. Like it would be so beneficial to have, Another Japanese guy go, yeah, I remember when I came over here, I had to deal with this and that and put your shoes over there. I know they do this on Thursday and whatever the differences are, because there's thousands of them to know that in advance and just take that apprehension out, which is natural for everybody. I'm sure Otani went through it too. And just take a lot of that away would be, would be awesome. Yeah. And, and, and excellent point. Just because your metrics are this and that and whatever, and we can make comps on it doesn't mean mm-hmm that there isn't a human element to it, that there's still adjustment that comes into play. There's still, you got to prove it every day. You're going to have bad right. games and all that. And and how does your teammates help you through it? How do you, you know, I remember talking to Sanga, asking him what he likes on his pizza and he liked corn on it. And I was like, I don't even know where I can get corn on my pizza here. Um, <laughs> but it's a different taste. Like it's different. You know, everything's different coming over. And how are you going to make those adjustments? I would love to see him go to a team that has done that before um, just because I want to see him at his best. He's showing all signs of being a great, great pitcher. And we don't want to, we want little, as little adjustment as possible. Well, if that's the case, uh, I think Sango is fortunate to go to New York where you can get any food of any kind you want somewhere nearby. So that's good. The other thing is, so Senga endeared himself by being a competitor, not making excuses after games, always, you know, never wanting to come out of games, fighting through stuff. Like, to me, he's now loved in New York. Like, you, in New York is a tough town. And if that's where, he, where mm-hmm. Yamamoto ends up, there's that little proving part. But once you prove yourself, you can have a city that's going to go crazy for you. And those two side by side would be ridiculous. Or those two, fa- you know, on the Yankees, which naturally brings glare to you, um, right. you know, I can see Cole being a really good mentor uh, for, for for Yamamoto, and uh, you know, I, I I can see him pitching in a big city. It's been proved it's been proven in New York, um, and then you have L.A., which also could be a good spot. Anybody's going to be a good spot. I mean, I'd love to right. play in Chicago and whatever. Like, uh, you know, 
you have say over there that could be a good friendship too you've got a lot of like there's so many places could he be in i don't know that the mariners need another pitcher but he could go there too you know mm -hmm. yeah um, I, hopefully we'll see it soon uh, yeah i don't know that we will but i hope we do anyway do you have any last parting words are, are you as excited as i am for this yeah, it's great. I cannot wait to see where he goes, where Otani goes. See, I mean, them on the same team. I had a you know this fever dream when I was on vacation that like MLB came in and said, John Fisher, we're forcing you to sell the team to us. Now we're going to. It's a dream. Okay. Did you say real. drunk Fisher? And, sure. <laughs> I, I, you're, 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 Code or Fi got yeah. Code or uh, <laughs> Right, and then they gave. Uh, Otani and Yamamoto, 49% together of the A's and kept them in Oakland. So, you know, it's the time of year where we dream. That was a literal dream. It'll never happen. But can't wait to see if those guys stay together or get together and, uh, you know, where he sits. Because that, I mean, my God, that is, that is a guy that just is going to change that race wherever he goes, wherever he goes. He's a legit frontline starter, and oh, I think yeah. everybody's got to be ready. So I think the excitement for him, hopefully we've made even more excitement because I'm, I'm really excited. I know when I was pouring through these numbers, I came to the same conclusion you did, but I like your ability to pour through the numbers way better because you have the actual maps for everybody and you do this for a living. I just do this because I'm pitching ninja. Um, but it's it was so crazy to see like the cutter thing jumped out at me it's just yeah, you saw burns right away right. i did too i was go, like yeah how, how's that how is that right and now again it's coming from five i felt stupid than... thinking that though like i'm glad you came to that conclusion because when i came to that conclusion i was like wait you're just comparing him with the best you know with my favorite cutter in, right. in baseball like what kind of stupid thing is that and then i'm having you back that up is uh is is Point enough. I'm feeling vindicated. If you want to put it on the ninja calendar, we'll get together in May, like late May, and we'll look if he's God willing, healthy, and pitching for someone. Let's look at his first couple months and then compare him to guys around. Be interesting. Yeah, absolutely, and I hope he gets a hold of your maps at some point too. Like that would be. I'm not. I'm not pitching so. your maps for folks, but you're nice well, enough to come on here. I should pitch your maps to him. Like, free. like. It, it'll it will help him get up to speed that much quicker yeah. having codify maps the maps to the stars <laughs> the maps. well for, i just made that right up. i like it let's make a shirt yeah there you go you can even write codify on it i don't codify uh, Cod codify maps to the stars a little you know guns yeah exactly line. we um, can do this spurs uh you know be, it'd be interesting to see a guy like that, even for 15 minutes, because not just to show him where his stuff's going to work here. Like, okay, Juan Soto's up against you, dude. I mean, you haven't faced a guy like this. Here's where you got to work. And he can work. He's got less blue than like, all that stuff. But the, the biggest thing for him, for me, is that, like we've already talked about, is how is he going to mix, in general, at least, his pitches? How is he going to do that? And that there's not an easy answer. I mean, he's not going to walk in with the right answer on that. Um, the maps could really help him solve that. Yeah, and that, that's absolutely the beauty of of what you do. And I've loved the the ability to know before somebody steps on a major league mound too. This is what your stuff compares with. This is what this guy struggled with, mm -hmm. and I can help you through it. And you've done it with so many different pitchers too. Yeah, you know, a guy, a guy like that would be interesting to see. Like we don't, you know, you look at as much data as you can, but you don't know what the hitters thinking. So you don't right. know how what they're guessing for pitch mix and what do they do when they guess right and all this stuff. But it's fascinating to see a guy like this. Where, you know, what would happen if you threw each pitch a quarter of the time and just freaking someone's in the dugout rolling a dice and signaling out and they go, okay, well, the dice is this. My God, you'd never guess it. Or again, this is cat out of the bag. I don't know if we talked about it. I probably shouldn't, but I have scripted pitches for big leaguers and God bless them. They followed it. And the, the results last year were insane. I mean, there was a shutout scripting, like, so you say I'm in, my do the I'm in my hotel. We, script we scripted the first three pitches of each of that, the first three times three. I mean, you're not going to do more than that and all that stuff. And things can change and you're feeling it out and all that stuff. Didn't make sense starting out to necessarily go, like, what if you have an eight pitcher? That's too complicated. But the, the first guinea pig threw a shutout and he had the first three pitches for the for all nine guys. We knew the starters. 
He had them fresh for game time. We knew the umpire. We knew everything was just golden. Um, because it was it wasn't the first game of the series, so we knew the, we knew the umpire the night before, and he had he was in his hotel room. We'd be like visualizing, I'm going to start this guy off with a splitter. Like no one does that, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to throw it here, and just he had that all that visualization, all that doubt of like, am I picking the right pitch or this or that? Screw that. You're going to go throw a curveball now because it, it's just because that's what is in the script. Yeah, and I don't care. And it was crazy because it like goes against a lot. But it's like, I don't care what happened on the first two pitches. Your third pitch is scripted a curveball. You're going to throw a curveball. I don't care if it's 2-0 or 0-2 or 1-1. I don't care. Throw a curveball. I'm like, okay, throw a curveball. And it, it was insane it, how well it worked. And it's like, what would happen if Yamamoto did that? Yeah. Because you because by definition, that it was created using random numbers, but within the map. So like, if you had super blue for one pitch, you're going to throw more of that. So it's going to come up more often, all that stuff. But you can't guess that because you don't know you can't there's nothing to guess it's ran it was random within your blue impossible to guess what does that do because guys guess right a lot and they are trying to outguess and all that stuff the catcher often is like i'm going to try to do this and that you can try to guess the pattern there there's no pattern literally so i don't know man I, you can tell i get excited about it i i'm looking for a couple more guys to do that this year well, it's yeah, got to be think, the right guy, like a like a four pitch guy. Would be right, for it. and that would be that would be what we got motive. here. So, uh, yeah. a four pitch guy could put it where he wants to. So this is like, oh, he's perfect. He would be it. like the push button dude. Yeah, he also repeats his, but like again, I've done I've done uh, overlays with him, and he's he's phenomenal at repeating his mechanics. Obviously, it's very simple mechanics too. Um, for a for a small guy, generates power very easily. Um, so that's that's another fun thing. If you make a coder fi shirt, ninja shirt, Co- <laughs> and he and he wears it, we'll do the first game free. There we go. We could do. That. Come on, come on. This is like a joint venture. You know where to reach us, Yamamoto. Yamamoto. I'm sure son. he's watching. I'm yes. Sure you're watching. Well, he might. You never know. Somebody will get this. Oh, to sure, him. sure. Well, hey, this was great as always. We'll get this up there. Um, thanks again, man, and hopefully this reaches. You, how do we contact you, Mr. Fisher? If somebody's out there, if Mr. Yamamoto is watching, yeah, there's a portal at codify.com. You can send email straight. Okay, through there us. you uh, go. You can also, of course, go to Twitter, uh, all over that. But, but codify.baseball.com is the easy thing to remember. And also, you, he can, if he wants to email me at rob at pitching ninja.com, I'm happy to do an interview and we'll also direct him your way as well. So, uh, right. It, it, if you look at the Twitter uh, banner, I'm sure there's probably guys he's already met at some point. So Exactly. Ask one of them, however you well, want to do it. Well, again, everybody remember, hit subscribe, and it's been a great conversation. I'm so excited to see where he ends up. Look forward to it. Thanks for inviting me. Later, dude. Take care.